Here it is. Here we are. Episode four. Yeah, boy. Oh my goodness. Mmm. So we have some talking to do before we get to this episode. We do. I'm very excited to hear your theories. So I may have gone bonkers. We've been editing episode <laughs> one. I just started editing episode two. And the ending of episode three set my brain fucking on fire. Haywire. Fucking lit. Oh what, what my it is, god. Was is still, I think. So here's the thing. Is at the end of episode three, they're like, <laughs> all of these people are dead. All of these people have an alibi. Who killed someone? Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, and no more than 18 people are yeah. alive uh, on the island. Now, quite easily, no more than 18 people means less than 18 people is obviously going to be the answer. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it, it was one of the 18, but they're all dead. So how could it How could it be possible? Those seem to be contradictory statements. Yeah, so here, what kind of started me on this train is hopefully if you've watched it is actually my epitaph theory video mm. so during that video i made the kind of like prodding suggestion after a like documentary that i'd watched uh well it was actually like a travel show um but mm -hmm. basically like bunkers in world war ii in japan like if they were going to get captured they would commit suicide rather than have the dishonor of being captured right okay um I don't know the full context of that. I just know from this show that it was a thing, at least in an isolated case. Yes, it was kind of kind of popular at one time or another in bunkers in Japan. Popular, popular. Look, oh god, <laughs> it was a thing. I'm just saying. Uh, but anyway, <laughs> what basically got me thinking is when they said all of these people are dead, there are no more than 18 people on the island. My immediate thought was maybe like if they were dead at the start of the game it doesn't, like, count towards the people. Because mm. if this, like, kind of suggestion of mine that maybe there's a bunker with corpses below the island, which I kind of suggested as a way that, like, corpse swapping could be done without anyone leaving the island, mm -hmm. um, uh, basically what that got me thinking is, well, okay, maybe some people were dead to start the game, and that's how, like, the yeah. crimes got carried out. Mm -hmm. So... There were kind of two ways that I poked at this, and both of them have problems with the red. Mm. So, the first thing is when we were talking about the end of episode three, I was like, alright, cool. So, George goes back to see Shannon, is killed, and then, uh, Cannon, in quotations, helps Jessica escape from, uh, from Ava. Yeah, he, like, talks over the soothing voice, and... He, she can't touch him or else the, the illusion will vanish because he's a, he's a dead soul, right? Yeah, but what, <laughs> what I've kind of noticed over time is that the magic scenes tend to reflect some form of reality. Yeah, definitely. Uh, so, what got me thinking then is we saw Shannon come back to life, which was suggesting it's something. We saw Cannon appear and guide uh, Jessica to safety. Mm. And, uh, and we saw Beatrice getting attacked by Ava Beatrice and her beating heart was yeah. floating in the air for a little bit. So, to me, what I think happened is, uh, there are less than 18 people on the island, mm. and my prime suspects for who this condensed person which, is- Which one of the 18 is it? My primary suspect is Shannon and Cannon. Right. Why? Okay. Mm. Now, this one, this one took me a little bit. <laughs> I first thought of it, like, really late at night, just as kind of, like, an idea, and then I was up until about 3 a.m. watching over every episode one video that we had, trying to see if Shannon and Cannon were ever in a room with Battler at the same time. Mm -hmm. They are not. Mm -hmm. The following day, I went through all of episode two. Mm -hmm. They are not. Yep. Yep. That makes sense. And just a couple of days ago, I was editing the beginning of episode one, and, like, there are, like, an hour worth of scenes of just Shannon, Cannon, and Beatrice talking to each other. Mm. And at the end of one of those scenes, Shannon and Cannon get a, quote, identical mark on their hands. It's true. Uh, they get a bruise. So I saw all of these things and I was like, okay, this is ridiculous. Mm. And then the, the other thing that I thought then is, oh, wait, hold on. But Shannon and Cannon were in the same space at the shed when the first murders were committed. And I went back and I rewatched it. And I was like, crap, this is a problem. I don't know, like, this theory is out the water. And then I noticed nobody actually saw Shannon except Hideyoshi, yeah. where she was explicitly described as being out of sight 
bathed in shadow. Yeah, I believe Battler's dialogue is something like, there are five corpses, but wait, are there more? Yeah. He never explicitly says that there are six corpses. That's right. So, of course, to do this, we have to suspect Hideyoshi is an accomplice, mm -hmm. but listen, I'm doing it. There's <laughs> no way the writing is- How could you suspect Hideyoshi? Such a fun-loving, uh, nice guy. Well, here's the thing. Is Why it, would in, he be an accomplice in, in murder? In episode three, we've already established that he was an accomplice to Ava's crimes. This is true. So we've established that he has a breaking point where he can become an accomplice. Mm, you think so? Yeah. Um, so, yeah, my current theory is Shannon and Cannon are one person- and that's how these murders have been carrying out. But then we get to the problem of the red. Mm. Now the red says in episode three, Shannon is dead, Cannon is dead. Mm -hmm. So the problem, the two problems that we have, right, is that if there is one person playing two, mm. then one of those two char like one of those two personalities dying mm -hmm. counts as a death supposedly. So we need to redefine death. And then the other suggestion that I had is at the end of episode three, I said, maybe Shannon and or Cannon were killed before the events, mm. and then, um, or were killed, like, during the events and were then impersonated. Yeah. In which case, we the need to- The courses could be there. Yeah, we need help. to define- Not that we need them, yeah, we mind need, you. Yeah, but we need to then define the definition of people, mm -hmm. because if their two corpses are dead on the island, mm. then, uh, do they count? So what I was saying earlier, where maybe dead people don't count if they're dead before the game starts, mm. was one way around that. And then the other idea was that, um, like, the idea of death would include the person- like, the personality that this culprit is portraying, uh, no longer being active. How does that make any sense, though? How does that work? What- how could you say that someone who is not a per- like, you got a person with a with a body, yep. and they're pretending to be other people, maybe, or they're playing them or whatever. How can you say that those people that they're playing are dead unless they were actually a person? Like, unless they had a like a separate body and they were a person. How does how does that work? Yeah, I mean, I can't tell you, but what I'm saying is that for like closed rooms, yeah, we ended up getting a definition for closed rooms. This is true. And I've been saying for a little bit now that I think all of the closed rooms before that definition were solvable, solvable rather by the things that were said that you could solve them with. Sure. Right? So I think what it's going to end up being is we're going to end up in the same situation with death. Alright? I think we're going to get a red truth of like, this is what dead means. Yes. This is what people means. Um... And then, yeah, I think that's about, like, as far as that, you know... I mean, you have another theory, because the main problem that I have with your theory is that you have a shitload of accomplices <laughs> in your theory. Mm -hmm. I don't know how much detail you want to go into that, but let's let's go through my <laughs> let's go through my. I'd love to go through it and like detail how many people are supposedly working with this Shannon Cannon hybrid person thing. Because right. it's a fucking laundry list of people. It really is. Mm -hmm. So the this is this is my like game layout at the moment. So before the game. And this is something we- I don't think we've spoken about. No, this is cool. Is Kinzo's dead. Kinzo, yeah, why? Kinzo's fucking dead. Why? Listen, when someone is supposedly g would have died two <laughs> years before a murder mystery novel starts, they're fucking dead. You think so? They're dead. I know what you mean. I am pretty sure so Bella- dead. Hold on now. No. Nah. No, nah, because that happened in the magic scene. Nobody's seen Kinzo. And here's the thing, is you were asking me about this theory, mm. why, uh, like, why the scene with Natsui happened where she went to speak with Kinzo and then came out and Kinzo wasn't there mm -hmm. is because she's trying to pretend that Kinzo's alive so they don't have to divide up the inheritance yet. <laughs> and she goes in and she's like speaking with him, leaves, mm -hmm. pretends to have spoken with him. That is an excellent theory. The only time I think that Battler has seen Kinzo, at the end of EP2 when he walks into Kinzo's study and has a conversation with Genji and Beatrice. Yep. And at the end of EP3 when they're in the Golden Land. I uh -huh. believe those are the only times that he's ever actually spoken with Kinzo. Yeah, so... Kinzo's dead. Fuck him. I I love him as I love him as a character. He's so beautiful though. He's he's my, one of my favorite characters to play, but he's so dead. <laughs> um. So episode one for the first Twilight. Uh. So we have we have a list of accomplices. The accomplices is basically all the servants. Yep. Uh. Sure. And Nanjo, and Ava, and Hideyoshi. Okay. That's a lot of a lot this of is accomplices. For EP1, yeah. Yeah. This is a lot of accomplices. Mm-hmm. Um, I assume you mean all the servants except for Goto because he's dead immediately. 
I mean, not necessarily, but he certainly doesn't become an accomplice, mm. even if he was compliant in it happening. Right. Okay. Um, so yeah, basically, by means of maybe the, like, sleeping pills that uh, Rosa had, mm. maybe by just having a large number of accomplices, those who were killed on the first Twilight are gathered in the dining hall, killed, and then taken out. Mm. Um, and then because the servants are working with them, the whole problem of the keys and closed rooms uh, is pretty easy to break open. Pretty, pretty easy. Mm. Uh, the second Twilight. One thing I noticed when I was going through episode one is like yeah. the day the during the day before the second Twilight, Ava just goes ham on Natsy. Yeah, she does. And if she's an accomplice, it's like really suspicious, and she gets very defensive about the fact that well, no, it can't be me doing this, and it can't be me doing this. And we kind of, across the other episodes, we've never really established Ava as someone to pose theories. That's kind of always been Kyrie's. I mean, she does it, let's see, she does it in EP1. She does it in she EP1. She's the person who says it's a, it's a server conspiracy, mind you. But like, very interesting. Yeah, yeah. But the point is more that m my suspicion then is that maybe because she's an accomplice, she's going ham. And then the second Twilight is like, hey, I, the culprit, need to speak with you. Let me into this room of yours. Mm. Kills them both uh, after they, like, went absolutely ham and also because they matched the second Twilight. Sure. And then because the culprit is one of the servants and those are the people that, like, you know, find it, it's canon, this personality canon. Mm -hmm. uh, and Genji, right? And Genji, but if they're working together, then it doesn't matter. The, the mm. chain was already cut. Like, he was inside the room, did the murders, Came back, cut the chain, and then everyone showed up. You reckon? So it was never actually locked in the first place. Hmm. Um. Then the fourth Twilight, uh, Kinzo's corpse is like presented, basically as a buffer for the damage that Ava did to mm. arouse suspicion on Natsuhi. Sure. Because Ava's like, well, you know, what? What about this thing? Did you kill? Th what? Where did Kinzo go? Did you? Did you kill him? What happened? And then Kinzo rocks up dead, and then the person that is obvious to suspect in that is Natsuhi. Natsuhi, yeah. But if Kinzo's already dead, it doesn't matter, it was just meant to frame her. And that may then also explain why Natsuhi is so shocked and doesn't really say much about it. Mm. She's like, we have to leave and go to the study and not worry about this. Not worry about the fact that Kinzo has, has been dead the entire time, yeah. basically. Sure, sure, I like that theory. Um. Then the fifth Twilight, we're assuming Nanjo is a, uh, an accomplice, so yep. Cannon doesn't actually die, and then they leave his corpse in the room anyway, mm. so no problems there. Uh, I don't think they do, actually. They take him to the servant room. No, 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 there. that's what I said, is they leave him in the servant room. Oh, right, yeah, yeah, because he gets hit in the boiler room. Um, but yeah. So that's a fake death. Then uh, Twilight 6 through 8, I mean, they go down. And they get murdered. They get murdered. Yeah, yeah. That's and Marie is the only one left. Yeah, um, that one's not hard. Mm. And then- And then of course the person that Beatrice dress at the end is this- Is this culprit. This culprit person. Who, yeah. the, the conglomerate of Shannon and Cannon. Mm. Um, then, the set- episode two. So, the adults meet to discuss something, maybe in the chapel, maybe they're trying to solve the epitaph, if my theory is correct, and they're like, well, what, what can we find here? Mm. Um, and then also, you know, maybe they do find it, maybe that's where, where the gold comes into it, and then, because they found it, the culprit's like, oh shit, kills them. I mean, wasn't the part of the letter that Beatrice sent to them that if they solved the epitaph that the, the murders would be called off? I mean, maybe? But... I don't know, like... Beatrice says in red in EP3 that she always keeps her promises. I know, but the point, the point is more trying to allocate the timing. Right. Sure. I'm not saying that like necessarily that's what the culprit did, but it's more like, oh hey, they're in the chapel where supposedly the epitaph is solvable. Sure. Uh, so you know, that's that's what happens, and then also because like maybe the parents are there and maybe the servants are there, then there's no problem getting the key from Maria and getting it back. Um, so then Twilight Two, which was one of the other ones, which basically like was giving it away to me. Mm is uh, Jessica and Cannon are killed, and then Cannon's corpse disappears. Mm -hmm. If Cannon's the culprit, he just leaves the room and locks it, right? Mm. Not even hard. And then also, if Shannon and Cannon are one person, it means that they as a person have two keys, because mm. they're the servant key for each of them, right? Yep. 
Um, they're, they're a 5 7 key, so that, three, seven. that makes that whole thing so easy. Mm. Uh, and then it also makes sense when Cannon rocks up later and starts attacking them that it actually is Cannon. Because he's the culprit. Mm. Um, so then the problem, of course, is. Uh, Shannon dies. Yeah, she dies with a hole in her head. She dies, Pretty and, hard to fake and that. then people still die afterwards. I think, uh, the scene where Genji, like, throws a knife in the wall, mm. and, like, impales a butterfly is meant to be like, oh, hey, look, Genji can do some shit, right before he, as an accomplice, goes and kills the last two Twilights, mm. after, uh, the culprit has committed suicide. Right. Now, your question was, when I posed this, how did they commit suicide? Yeah, how did it happen? So, I was talking with someone trying to sell them on the idea of experiencing Umineko, either by reading it or watching our playthrough, and I was like, yeah, so it's like a whole bunch of people on an island, a whole bunch of murders start happening, and they're like, oh, that sounds like, and then they no, went no, on. No, no, no. And I was like, oh, what's this? And I looked it up, and uh, the culprit in that one mm -hmm. dies from a shotgun wound to the head where the shotgun then falls away and hides itself. Spoilers for, and then they went on, by the way. <laughs> It's too late. Um, <laughs> but I'm a spoiler one of you bastards. But, Shannon dies in front of the dresser. Yeah, she's slumped over the dresser. With a wound to her head and the stake at her feet. Not in her head. Mm. I think every other corpse that we've found so far had the stake in the wound. Yeah. Um, so yeah, that's a suicide. Then Genji kills the last two. And then... Uh, we'll get back to the 10th Twilight for all of these ones at the same time, but I yeah, do want to bring that one up as well. Sure. So then, for episode 3, I think episode 3 is really easy, we've kind of like, we already bossed- Episode 3 is pretty straightforward, Yeah, honestly. we bossed it open 2 to 8, with, uh, with the purgatory space with Batlock, mm -hmm. which was really cool. Um, but the things I wanted to say, so, to start with, this conglomerate personality kills the servants, and then, if it's Shannon and Cannon, Shannon is the first one that is found, Cannon is the last one that is found, so mm -hmm. they, like, move between the rooms. Yeah. Uh, then Twilight 9 is the is the one I really love, where George is summoned by Nanjo, who has yeah. to be an accomplice in this, to go... Uh, and he's the last one he speaks to before he goes to the man the mansion, right? It was just giving him some coffee, though. Yeah, it was what? just getting yeah. some coffee. No, but my, my theory is, is that the culprit basically got Nanjo to send George to the mansion, then killed him, which is why we see him, like, reunited with Shannon, who then dies. Uh, and then... also, that's what happens to Nanjo. He rocks up and the accomplice ties up- ties up loose ends. Sure. Yeah. Well, the culprit ties up loose ends, rather. Uh... Yeah, and then, then the, we The have... only other thing I wanted to say, which I might have said on recording before, but I'm not entirely mm -hmm. sure, is that I was struggling with why Ava would have killed her own family, but... Because uh, it's this other culprit person. Yeah, it's the yeah. other culprit, and then for Hideyoshi, it would have been like a parting shot from Ava or Rudolph, which is why the whole scene where... Kyrie or Rudolph. Kyrie or Rudolph. Yeah. Did I say Kairi? You said Ava and Rudolph. Sorry. Yeah. Ava from Kyrie and Rudolph. Uh, where basically, like, where Kyrie is like, oh, look at this steak, fuck this steak, oh, wrecked steak. <laughs> that whole scene is meant to be like, Kyrie got back at them somehow. That's right. what I think that represents, and that's why I think Hideyoshi dies. Sure. Yeah, cool. Um, so then let's get to the 10th Twilight. Yes, now this is the fun one. I'm really excited to hear Where from you on this. I... They prostrated themselves. Yeah, they prostrated themselves. And prostrated. now, I definitely said it on recording, I think... Something happens, some mechanized thing happens on the island at the second midnight where everyone dies. Mm. I suggested, jokingly... A while back, wouldn't it be funny if everything just blew up at the end of the story? And then I was like, actually, that would make sense. Mm. And then I was looking over it, and I realized uh, in the first Twilight, you know, everyone's bits of jaws and stuff were found, which would make sense if their corpses in were like- In episode one? Yeah, in episode one where their corpses were scattered. Yeah, Merlin in episode, Maria's jaw is yeah. identified, their corpses are not found. In episode two, uh... Maria and Rosa are running away f towards the beach. Why are they running away towards the beach? What could possibly be happening that was sending them away towards the beach? Mm. What if everything was blowing up and they were <laughs> trying to escape? Yeah, I mean, most of the characters, when we look at their, like, death screens, they've been torn to pieces by demons. Yeah. Uh, which is nice and- nice and fun there. And then, for episode three, I mean... That would explain why Jessica didn't survive, even if she wasn't killed by either of the culprits. Mm. And 
Also, if the whole thing about the bunker below the island is like a way between the two mansions is a thing, or mm -hmm. even if it's just like safe from the explosion, yeah, it would make sense that Ava, having found the gold, escapes down into this bunker. She has a place to hide out. Though the interesting thing then to me is how did Rosa and or Ava find out about these explosives? Yeah, I mean, the, the question then is if there is like a bomb that like blows up the island or some horseshit like that, and Ava is able to escape from it, why why does nobody else, including the culprit, like what, why does something set off the bomb and the, and yet the culprit is dead at the end of all? Yeah, I mean, like, basically very interesting the hole me. that we're getting to in this theory is that we have no motive for anyone, mm. but I mean... That's why we're still reading, right? It's true. If if this is in fact the solution for for how things happened, mm. we need to keep reading to find yeah. why. Because there's and the I, who done I, it, the how done it, and the why done yeah, it. Yeah, like I'd love colors. to sit here and prod and poke at it, and I've suggested things like maybe the culprit was the like uh, bastard child of uh, human Beatrice and Kinzo. Mm. Um, like that's just a thing I suggested, but. I think really we should just keep reading because we could sit here and throw things on the table for ages. Yeah, sure. But, I mean, that's the fun of Umineko. Fucking theory crafting is nice. But listen, of the we fun. invited these people here for episode four. Let's it's give true. them episode four. Sure. I'm down. Oh, look, it's all filled out. This is exciting. You want to read that one? Yeah, I gotcha. Episode four Alliance of the Golden Witch. Alliance? Alliance. Good morning. How shocking that you haven't been forced in sur into surrender even now. By this point, even I am forced to expect a lot from you. Not all of the game takes place on the board. How about taking a little peek at the outside this time around? They say that if you know your enemy, you need not fight a hundred battles. The difficulty level depends on you. The manner in which you fought up until now will greatly influence the difficulty of this game. Well, which I feel like is saying, hey, if you've figured shit out, this will be easy to understand yeah, for you. Yeah, I... Basically. Like, honestly, I don't want to sit here and be like, oh, I got this. <laughs> but, like, but seriously, I, I reckon I got this. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. I... I'm very confident with the epitaph. I'm, I've yet to see something that will disprove my like, two people as one theory sure. for Shannon and Cannon. Yeah, I mean my main Which, question by the is way, the why. Of I've been avoiding mentioning this just for the sake of like, keeping my wording consistent. But if I say like the character Seo, um, that's mm. the like name I'm using for Shannon and Cannon condensed as one person because yeah. that's the only like alternative name we have for either of those two. Because yeah, that's what Shannon says is her like her true name. Yeah, before, when... before she went to the orphanage or whatever it was. Yeah. Um, yeah. So if I if I say, well, what about the Sayo culprit? Th that's what I'm saying. The Sayo culprit theory has I, a title now. Yeah, I will say I will laugh so much if that's actually what the character's name is. <laughs> that would just be a little too much for me. I don't know. We'll have to find out. I, guess. I really, I really want to go get like a supercut of like all of the times I've said this is too much for me. <laughs> just smash them together. <laughs> yeah, totally. Because it, it has to be reaching like critical mass at this point. All right, let's get started let's on the show. Let's go. Ugh. The difficulty manner in which you fought the game until now will decide the difficulty. Ugh! I believe I'm gonna you. tear this shit to pieces. Damn, that's fucked up. Oh god. Fictional I will say, and fantastic if we nature. just if we just go to like magic bullshit and just like forget the murder mystery and go to witch fighting, I'm I'm screwed. <laughs> Can't handle it. This is a very long black screen. I'm very disconcerted. That sounds like a helicopter. It totally does. The first day, October 4th, 1986. I thought we were outside the game board! Oh. Who, who says we're not? I will say, we also just uploaded the first episode of episode 2, so yay! yay. Oh, it's not a helicopter, it's a fucking plane. Well, either uh, way. But yeah, so, episode two is a thing now, so we're editing that if that becomes relevant. Oh, oh look! We're back here! We're back in the airport! This isn't the airport, this is where they get the boat after the airport. Yeah, whatever. Same difference. Listen. The place before the island. I think the community is getting tired of you screwing up being the expert here, because mm -hmm. clearly it's me at this it's point. It's basically the ex the airport. Either way. I mean, it might be Najima Airport, but it's definitely not the one that they start at. Eh. This, eh. Is, this is the landing airport. Whatever. This it's, is where they get the the landing boat. airport, it's an airport. It's anyway, if you'll excuse me, the master must work. <coughs> <laughs> you alright, Butler Kun? We're already on the ground and you can't fall any further than that. See? <laughs> there you go, they're on the ground after getting See? the plane. Ew! <laughs> fall! Fall! <laughs> I'm so excited to once again be back at lighthearted stuff before See, murder. everything's fine. Everything's fine. We're outside the game board. Nobody's dead. I'm really interested to see if we actually get another set of murders mm. this time around. We'll see. 
In the lobby of the Nijima airport. See, fucking told you. Get out of here. Yeah, but I said it wasn't it's the, the airport. airport. It, oh. you know, it doesn't matter. We're both right. Point is, Maria dashed around in excitement. Butler's uproar on the plane must have been hilarious. Must have been hilarious. Must have been. Too bad we didn't we get to see it. We still haven't seen it. No. We haven't seen it. Is it is it therefore magic? Is is, is this <laughs> it's in the cat magic? Box. We don't know. Oh shit. <laughs> hey Maria, cut that out. I'm sorry, Battlecoon. Please don't take it badly. What a pathetic guy you are. Even with our huge body, you still can't handle vehicles. Shut up. All humans have one or two things they can't handle. Like witches. Like magic and horseshit. Well, actually, ha he has magic resistance power endless nine or some it's horse true. shit. It's true. Nine 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 nine. Whatever the fuck that Peter. is. Peter. Badlacoon, why don't you come with your aunt on an overseas trip sometime soon? How about Europe? I'm sure you could manage half day trip on a plane. <laughs> God damn it! Stop it, mother. Badlacoon's dislike for vehicles is probably genetic. She's. <laughs> Is he implying that he also is scared of planes? God damn. That's an interesting question. Or oh, that Rudolph is, rather? I don't know. Oh, Asumu is. Oh, you mean Asumu-san? For some reason, she just couldn't handle vehicles. I guess they were. Pretty much anything other than a bicycle or a car. Whenever we tried to go far away, that woman was just so annoying with the not this, not that, I'm scared, I'm scared, fall, fall, yeah, yeah. That's how Rudolph says, yeah, apparently. Children tend to learn things their parents can't handle the dangerous. Well, it was like verging on diss track right there. It was perfect. Just put in the kick drums. Heck yes. I'm sure Batlikun saw Asmusan doing something like that and learned that vehicles are scary. <laughs> so it's Asmusan's genes then, is it? Who knows? Those would be some pretty annoying genes. That's enough talking about Asmu. Right now, you're the one who's here, right? You're right. Sorry. We killed her! Uh, she's totally been murdered. Hey, the cars are here! Exactly three of them. Get in, get in! Exactly three. Fall, fall! Where's the parachute? Where's the parachute? <laughs> I love how you're just so into this, you're laughing even before it tells you to. I know the character's back to front. Why, you little- uh, Hold on, hold on, stop right there. Sends you to the little girl tickle punishment. God damn it, Battler. Uh, what a- what a- what a clown! <laughs> <laughs> Being in high spirits is such a wonderful thing. That battle could and Maria Chan, the atmosphere in that plane would have been pretty grim. Thanks. I'll assume you meant that literally. Hey, brats. The taxes are here. You can play around later. Ooh, ooh! Taxi, taxi! I'm getting in first! <laughs> Hey Maria, and you two bad lacoon, stop fooling around. You'll bump into someone. The tone of Van Rose's voice. Oh, this is you. The tone of Van Rose's voice grew a little frightening. Yeah, boy. When, when even, even Battler realized they were fooling around a bit too much, just as expected, he bumped into someone. Oh, oh, sorry. <laughs> bad lacoon, you guys are going in that car. You're keeping them waiting. After George and urged him to hurry on, Battler apologized to the person he had bumped into and ran up to his parents, who were telling him to come quickly. With a clunking sound, the doors on the three taxis were shut one after another, and they departed for the harbor. I'm excited! As their taxis dashed away, the entire world grew suddenly dull and slowed to a halt. Here it is, boys. What? Fucking Shirabe. Voices, the wind, and even sound. All of it stopped. And all the people who were trying to move froze like the instant someone takes a photo. Coming to a halt. People and machines and clock hands, even the dust dancing in the wind, were frozen. Some people who were walking froze with one leg still in the air. Scraps of paper dancing in the wind were pinned in midair, frozen in place. Then, among the shadows standing still in this unmoving world, a single, single one stirred. So this is like explaining how the purgatory reality, like... Interact. Witnesses everything else. Mm -hmm. Which... Here she is. Mm -hmm. Actually, now that I think about it, I I did actually see a clip from the anime which matches this, so... Yeah. By the way, only one clip I've seen of the anime. Don't watch the anime, it's a bad idea. It was a girl. The girl Battler had just bumped into. Though she had moved, it was a truly subtle thing. Her gaze dropped, her shoulders lowered a minuscule amount, and she sighed. That was all. 
In a normal world, that probably wouldn't be even be taken as movement. If he says it's only natural, I will fight him. But in this world, it looked very out of place. Okay, good. Then something else moved. There was a black cat wandering around the shadows near the taxi rank. It came up right behind the girl and leisurely changed his form into that of a human. This was no cat. It was a witch. Of course, the girl was also a witch. As the witch stood still, her gaze still downwards, she muttered. I can't stop everyone from going to Rakanjima, can I? You cannot. On October 4th, 1986, you were not here. If I were, would stopping everyone really have been possible? Well, I can't imagine what a six-year-old girl could do to make them turn back. Still, that's right. If you were in this place, the probability wouldn't have been zero. Whenever there's a probability greater than zero, I can seek out a miracle. If I hadn't been sick and they hadn't left me behind. With her head facing downwards, the witch tightened her fists. They were trembling very slightly. He was sick in bed starting October 3rd, 1986. That is a very short time scale. Yeah. And Beto's game board is sealed off starting October 4th. You are not given a chance to avoid getting sick. In other words, it would normally be absolutely impossible for you to enter her game board. Oh. Thanks for being patronizing. <laughs> I know that. I know that just seeing father, mother, and Oni-chan healthy like this, even that alone is a spectacular miracle. And she had tried to stand in the way of her family, attempting to stop them from leaving the airport and heading towards Rakenjima. However, it was impossible for her to exist in October 4th, 1986, so she couldn't do it. Even though her brother had only bumped into her and apologized, even though he hadn't realized she was his own little sister, it had been such a miracle that she could cry. That would be, like, emotionally devastating. Yeah, we fucked up. What's interesting here, mm. we're referring to Angie as a witch, and we covered this at the end of EP3, yeah. but she's become a witch. Battler's job is to deny witches. This is all getting very out of hand. It really is. I'm, I'm interested to see what it actually means, mm. but because we're still separated from, like, separated from the actual... Denying of which is yeah, stage the, the right actual, now. Yeah, like Battler and Beatrice. Because like, as far as I'm concerned, this is still like purgatory, the meta space. Sure. Which doesn't really like. It's just in a different time, yeah. sort of a day earlier. Yeah, I know. It might be worth thinking about what. I mean, it I'm means certainly thinking about it, but like, if we're denying witches and that's going to be a successful plight, then mm. we just keep saying it. It's not real. Sure. Um. All right. Well, we'll have to see what you think about Angie, then. Sorry about the sarcasm. I won't waste the miracle you've given me. I'm glad to hear it. Come, let us go with them. To Rakenjima. All of the pieces are already gathered. The curtain will open on the fourth game. By this time, Beato and Battler will already be seated. To Rakenjima. To where am I now? To where everyone's fates changed the... Rakenjima of October 4th, 1986. What happened on that day? I'll expose it. I'll learn what it is. I'll bring them back. As she stood there with her fist still clenched, she surely turned her face up to the heavens. A single tear drop from the depths of her eyes dripped down into the air. And when time started moving again, the two witches' figures were swallowed up by a blowing gale and erased in an instant. No, actually, I just thought... If Angie is fighting to save them with miracles and Battler is fighting to deny witches, mm. only one of the two children can win. Pay attention to this. Is this a different one? Oh, yep. it totally is. Yep. Yeah, it is. I'm going to talk over the top of this, though, because <laughs> we've had two copyright strikes on oh this shit now. Oh, my God. Well, let me know if anything leaps out. Damn, here. that's actually an island. Yeah, it is. Fucking Rakenjima. Except the water is seems to be very off scale, <laughs> if that is 10 kilometers in circumference. Yeah. The steps, the portrait and Beatrice. Oh my god. Ah! And the rose. That was Maria's shirt there, wasn't it? I think so. Hmm. My goodness. We've actually had purgatory space in the intro. Yeah. Super fun. The lovers. 
Now listen, I know I'm clutching at straws here, but I will point out that Shannon and Ken appeared in the same place on screen. <laughs> of course. Oh shit, was that the war tower? That was the shoulder tower. Oh. Yeah. yeah. This opening is tight. This is this is pretty cool. It's a shame we're not gonna be able to hear most of it. <laughs> I mean listen. Yes, this is the heart. Oh my god. The the first two episodes are still up there if people wanna listen to the soundtrack. It's true. Oh, you can just go to YouTube. Was that a family photo? No, what? What are you talking about? And Angie looked older in that family photo. Did she? I think so. It might have just been that they used the sprite to save time, but probably. Yeah, I mean, she's kind of inserting herself into the game board, right? Yeah, I guess. Sense. Oh my god. I think that was the shortest time we've had before the OP so far. Yeah, that was super snappy. Oh shit, this is the bunker. Yep, this is the... the old room. Good morning, milady. Paimai, you do appear to be in a good mood. What a pleasant awakening you seem to have had. Oh. <laughs> what do you mean, pleasant awakening? I was so excited I couldn't sleep a wink. After all, the curtain is rising on the fun, fun fourth game. <laughs> Fucking... Beatrice. I am excited. Ugh. Like, in the other episodes I've come in scared, this time This I'm, time you're like, fuck, let's go. Let's go. go. <laughs> it seemed that she truly had been so excited that she hadn't gotten any sleep. Did she show absolutely no signs of lacking sleep because she was young or because she had the mind of a little kid? Rodeve chose not to say that aloud and laughed. Puk -puk -puk. Instead. I'd like to imagine that in, like, the reality of the purgatory space, they can mm. actually just see all of this text, so Beatrice is just like, <laughs> You motherfucker! I see you saying that shit! You take that down right now! I really ran that battle into the ground last time! You might have got badly, you didn't get me, bitch! <laughs> the look on his face when he was like, You tricked me! That was so pathetic! <laughs> Even so, is that guy still feeling down? Feeling down, you say? Hmm, well, that's right. That man's a, a bit too trusting for his age, isn't he? <laughs> Indeed. Although you could call that his charm. Go, 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 go. I I will say I don't know, <laughs> I don't remember if we've captured this on camera. I, I mean I definitely said it at the time, but the like flourish. No, no, no. The, oh, okay. The whole time I was like, this is a ploy. Mm, this is it's a true. ploy. But you I was did still say that. I was still going along with it because it was just so great to go <laughs> along with. It. It was yeah. like a point where I'm like, I know this is a ploy, but I'm rooting for the antagonist. What is it's this? It's true. It's true. It was amazing. Fucking I loved it so us. much. <laughs> Episode three was fantastic. It's pretty brilliant. <laughs> I did the truth. I did the truth. <laughs> well, speaking of which, didn't he totally fall for that one last time? Battle that is. Yes, totally and splendidly. You violated the purity of one never deceived since the time of his birth, as well as his rosebud-like innocence all to your heart's content. Even the joy of dashing across a field covered with beautiful new snow on a winter morning and trampling it completely wouldn't even begin to compare. Wow, that was ruthless. Didn't you take Battle Samar's innocent heart and quite th thrillingly, splendidly, atrociously, mercilessly, and unculturedly go just a little too far? And you insulted him to the highest degree, enough to make one uneasy. Most people would be crushed after something like that. Go, 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 go. So much, so that they wouldn't want to see your face ever again. I, I know that much. I also, um, thought that if he was too designed to join us at the table, even though the fourth game is finally starting, that would be such a pain. So I came to you, thinking that it'd be better to prepare a countermeasure for that case beforehand. Long pause. Long pause. Hmm. In that, in that case, it... Yes, in that case, perhaps it really would be best to prepare such a countermeasure. I am sad to say that your North Wind in the Sun strategy gave Battle Summer quite a shock. Oh. A shock, you say? How bad of one? Berta lowered her voice slightly, asking timidly. Renovay followed suit and lowered his voice in the same way. I'm really excited to see who Vigilia is on this game board, because she was like Bat Battler's ally, and then now- She was very helpful. And then now she- Until she turned on him at the yeah. end, but yeah. <laughs> in truth, he has been crouching and clutching at his knees for some time now. I spoke to him several times, but he did not answer. I also brought him some food, but he never even touched it. That is troublesome. Is he really feeling that down? Go, 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 go. It is only natural. After all, you thought, uh, roughly, beating him down 
You thoroughly right, I see. You thoroughly beat him down, Melody. That would make most people start to distrust humans. I think that was meant to be like the thoroughly with each I sentence. I get it. I am getting it now. He's very passionate about what he's saying. Mm. I feel it in the gut. Yes, thoroughly. Da, da. Oh, distrust of humans. How convenient. Let him give up on humans and trust witches. <laughs> oh. <clears throat> Sorry, I shouldn't fall around too much. Beto had tried to joke about it, but the situation seemed to be quite serious. So that even she took the hint and hid her laughter. I is it really that serious? Should we wait just a little longer before beginning the fourth game? Lady Bancastle's guest will be arriving, so it may be best to open the fourth game quickly. However, perhaps you ought to show a little concern for Batless feelings, milady. Concern? Show concern, you say? H how should I do that? Um, he, he is feeling down. So that's right. Shall what I is this music? Him up? This is Monochrome Clock by Hold M. On. Zaki. This is Are you fucking... sure? Are you sure it's not Dancing Pipe? Then? <laughs> I'm very sure. This is one of the best fucking songs. I just want to listen to this for a second. Jazzy as fuck. Give it a sec. I want to. I want to look at this in the new images as well. <laughs> oh. Fucking run away. Ugh. Wait for it. Fucking vocals. I don't know what they're saying, but there are vocals. <laughs> this is this is getting a bit ridiculous. This is very jazzy. Let's keep going. When the person's heart is dark and closed off, interacting with them in a dark manner can do nothing. Your only option is to shine with a brightness stronger than the dark. Whoa. Whoa. Yeah. <laughs> Damn it. Quit messing around! <laughs> yeah! Bad Lacuna over here! Croissant baked by Ronave Summer would be wasted on the likes of you! Why don't I enjoy it myself? <laughs> Batless stomach involuntarily growled at the fragrant smell of the croissant. <laughs> His breakfast plate was empty, but Battler hadn't eaten any of it. The biggest glutton of the Seven Sisters of Purgatory, Beelzebub, had waited for Ronave to leave and had then come to snatch the food away. Butler had noticed, and they've been really noisy ever since. Even though Beelzebub only had to give it back immediately or else throw it into her mouth right away, she intentionally ran around in circles, making fun of Butler. Give my breakfast back, dammit! <laughs> give it back right now, I'll let you off with a single flick to the forehead. As you try eating it. He's using his fucking best move on a croissant. God I know, damn right? <laughs> what are you gonna eat me up instead? Oh my God. <laughs> if you think you can, just try it, I'll bet I'll be as sweet as honey pancakes! Oof. Oh! Did he just grab her by the hair? Yeah! Gotcha! Right now I want to eat that bread even more than your thighs. <laughs> God damn it! God damn it, Batman! No, Batman! Ugh! Oh, it took a second for that perf. one to sink in. <laughs> He's a giant perf! Have you remembered Be that? Be a good girl and give it here! <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> so you resist until the end. No way, no way, I won't give in to you! Even the croissant wants me to eat it. Yay! Yahoo! Good morning, Battler! <laughs> are you still moping so early in the morning? <laughs> Battler, are you in a red car? Hello! <laughs> oh my god. It's the beginning of a new day and a new game, so let's get our spirits up! What the fuck? <laughs> she flung the door open. She wasn't even in the room yet? <laughs> like a marathon runner, it gets better. Like a marathon runner drawn on a certain caramel box. With her hands held high in idiotic cheeriness, Beato appeared. For some reason, flags were around the world and confetti scattered about, perfectly completing this magnificent entrance. <laughs> what? Batler and Beelzebub, who had been fighting over the croissant, completely forgot about their argument, speechless. <laughs> Good morning, bitch of summer. I'll just be on my way now. Yeah, Batler couldn't say, ah. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> Hey, morning, Beto. Glad to see you're cheery this morning. <laughs> Beto and Bala looked at each other. Jesus Christ. Seemed neither had a clue what was going on with the other. B -b Battler, uh. <laughs> what, what's going on? Run away! He looks totally fine, doesn't he? Run away! <laughs> what? <laughs> what? <laughs> what? <laughs> Beto, please! I love you. He isn't clutching his knees and he's answering! Wait a sec, he was in the middle of eating! 
<laughs> Apple Coco Coco. <laughs> no, no, he was sleeping like a baby in his foot and clutching his knees. I informed him that it was time to wake up, but he just wouldn't rise. I tried to feed him, but it seems that a naughty cat wanted in, wanted in and prevented that. This is the best. <laughs> this is the best intro. <laughs> Oh, fucking Bano got punked by Ronovac. <laughs> oh my god. It's probably a ploy again, let's be real, but like... Oh, this uh, is... Ronovac, best... best Bronovay! Yes, <laughs> fucking Bronovac. Oh my god. Well, I just this have is to, a scene. I just have to soak to this a in. This is the best thing. <laughs> It doesn't even matter uh, that all of my theories will be correct. Uh -huh, Ronove punked sure. Beatrice. It's true, Ronove he just punked Beatrice pretty fucking well. Ah, you treat me! <laughs> you should talk. Beatrice. Weren't you the one who played that massive trick last time? Uh, I don't have a clue what's going on, but it looks like you got what you deserve. straight up was like, Beatrice, you did some shit in the last episode, I'm getting you back. By the way, Ronove, nice one. And then they fist bumped. Ah. Uh. <laughs> Thank you very much about the summer. The two men stuck up their thumbs as though they understood each other, chuckling together. This is so great. Oh my god. For a while, Beato was very energetic trying to hide her embarrassment. Ineffectively. Ugh. Oh my god. Huh. Don't take me so lightly. Did you really think I'd still be hiding in a corner holding my knees? <laughs> then who was that person crying their eyes out in frustration last time? You could have gathered your tears in a shower and called it face lotion. Oh, damn. <laughs> Shut up. I was just, uh, I was a little surprised by your crappy act. <laughs> Might have looked a little lame, but I don't think the same move will work twice. Damn straight. Of course not. And don't disappoint me by falling for the same move over and over again, okay? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just you watch. I'll show you that I'm a guy who gets stronger every time he's beaten down. I'm I'm weighing up. Was this better than Battler smashing Beatrice's face into a table? I think so. I think so. This is a highlight for me. This is fucking great. Yes. What? Don't do it again. <laughs> oh? Why is that? So you really are weak against a rear attack. You and I are enemies, and we'll certainly never join forces. I understand that clearly. So don't you ever try to trick me ab about that fact again. <laughs> <laughs> you say that, but knowing your weaknesses, I'll... Better thought they were still joking around, but that tone had disappeared from Battler's expression some time ago. Better felt as though his eyes were like the surface of black tea that had cooled down. You hear me? Don't do it again. Mm. I don't get it. I might do it again when you've forgotten, right? Don't do it again. Yeah. Uh... Pierced by his strong and forceful gaze, Beato held her tongue. Maybe she was certain that Battler would break that silence with laughter. However, Battler's serious expression didn't change in the slightest. So to break that silence, Beato had no choice but to start laughing herself. <laughs> <laughs> Very well. <laughs> you and I are worthy opponents. No matter how friendly our relationship will never be anything more than a pair of enemies. If you have not mistaken this, that is enough for me. That's right. I almost forgot you were my enemy for a second there, or for half a fucking episode. <laughs> I won't embarrass myself like that again. I won't fall for your rear attack again. Never again. He's gonna <laughs> fucking fall for another one, isn't he? <laughs> <laughs> it seems I'm not the only one who cannot wait for the fourth game. I am pleased, Battler. Come take your seat. Actually, it only just, like, properly sunk in, but the fact that they're calling this the fourth game... Mm. ...makes me wonder what Battler witnessed of the first game. Because he only showed up in Purgatory at the end, right? This is true. Does he remember it or not? Mm. Mm. Yeah, just how I like it. Clever little tricks won't work anymore. <laughs> Stop acting so tough. You remain in a state of surrender for the last mystery in the previous game, the mystery of Nadra's murder. My answer for that one's still on hold for now, but that doesn't mean I've lost heart. I've solved it, Bella. Don't worry, just send it in the mail to you. You'll, you'll get it there at Purgatory. <laughs> send it to Purgatorial Mail, yeah. hey. Here's your package. Here Delivered it by demons straight to your home. 
I'll definitely break your red truth and show you that I can deny witches. <laughs> a commendable attitude. You truly are a man like a phoenix. Don't betray my expectations. With that, let us raise the curtains on the fourth game. But before that, it seems we must welcome a new guest. A guest? You remember as well, correct? That mystery girl who appeared at the very end of the last game without an invitation, ruining my fun. <laughs> that person? Da da. She says she wants to join our game. I sent her an official invitation, inviting her to join this match. Renove, summon our guest. There's no need. I'm already here. Fucking nailed it. The voice that answered Beta's call came from the darkness in a corner of the room. When Butler turned around in surprise, he could now see that mystery girl there. I love this track so much. Oh, it's so good. My, my. <laughs> How rude. All you had to do was greet us as soon as you arrived. I don't make a habit of talking to people before punching them. After Fucking I punch, edgy. it's a different story, though. Fucking edgy! What a, oh my what God. a snap. Oh, and what would you say? Good night. Have a nice dream. <laughs> How amusing, how truly amusing. <laughs> Beata cackled and clapped her hands, but that was only Beata when nothing rose to Battle's face except a bitter smile. Huh, you sure are a fighter. Huh. Battler and the girl's eyes met and he shrugged his shoulders as he spoke, but the girl didn't answer, giving only a cold stare in return. You helped me out at the end of last game. Thanks for that. I don't need your gratitude. You were just slacking off. I only told you to open your eyes. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> That's so true. Stop slacking off, Battler. <laughs> Better tried to laugh as though sympathizing with her, but it didn't reach the girl's ears. She did absolutely nothing except stare at Battler with ice cold eyes. Well, it looks like someone hates me. I'm just annoyed you aren't taking this fight seriously. Damn. You're saying I'm not serious about this. Don't tell me that travesty earlier was you being serious. Don't take me for a fool. How long do you intend to play along with the witch's farce like this? I'm fighting Beato in my own way. Doing it seriously, of course. Seriously? Don't make me laugh. I keep on drinking tea and chatting with the witch full eternity and call that... Fighting seriously? Keep the jokes to your hairdo. Duh! Ah! Andrew in the house! God damn it, Angie. That's brilliant. <laughs> That's because I wasn't used to this witch's game in the beginning. I mean, through a lot of harsh stuff. Still, I'm finally starting to see how to fight, and I'm getting the knack of doing it. The pathetic way I've been acting makes it look like I haven't been serious to you. You're just wrong. Is that so? Of course, I know I gotta close in a lot more before I can grab Beto by the collar. There it is again, grabbing by the collar. Mm. Oh. This is... Part of an, an off intricate clue. Part of an off-screen discussion. What? Where you were like, oh, there was a cannon's collar has been grabbed, and no, yeah, Bella was... said he was going to grab someone by the collar. Yeah, that's exactly what it is. And that's the proof that seals the deal. It's that's it. Clearly. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. This is too easy, man. No matter how long that distance may be, it's still finite. And in each game that passes, I'm steadily closing that distance step by step. No matter how long it takes, I'll close in on that witch, and I'll definitely check Mater. Might take a thousand years to use her phrase, but even so, I'll definitely win sooner or later. Why? Because I definitely won't accept losing. I definitely won't stop moving forwards, closing in on her. In other words, there's just one thing I can say for sure. Here it comes. Oh! There it is. I will definitely win against that witch someday. Someday. That's how it is. Not a dessert. There it is. You really don't sound like you're in a hurry. You're even trying to win. Oop. Even the fight it can become endless if you treat it the wrong way. By now, you've become an Achilles who couldn't even outstrip a turtle. I get it. So this is why I'm needed. At this rate, there's no way you could win against the Endless Witch, even after a billion years. <laughs> who are you? It's not like you'd be struck by lightning if you just tell me your name. Oh, it cut. Music cut. At that point, the girl fell silent, gazing straight into Battler's eyes. At first, Battler faltered under the firmness of that look, and his gaze wavered slightly, but then his eyes gradually began to be sucked into the pupils that were staring at him. Then, inside those eyes, he saw a light that he'd seen some time before. 
Bella was struck by how strongly they resembled the eyes of a girl who definitely couldn't be here, even though that was completely impossible. I, I know it's stupid, but for some reason it feels true to me. That can't be right. The person's supposed to still be six years old. You couldn't possibly be Angie, could you? If I were to say that's right, you would believe me? Mm. I'll put it another way. If I said I am your ally, so trust me, would you believe it? Would you unconditionally trust some unknown girl you're meeting for the first time just because she looks a little like someone you know? It's because you're a softie that you got tricked so easily in the last game and cried so bitterly. You said it yourself. That kid is six, right? Do I look like I'm six? If I were to claim that I am that kid despite that, would you just swallow that story? If you say it like that, there's no way I can argue back. <laughs> Sorry. That's right, I'm, I am a softie. Mm. That should have been made clear to me after the last game. Is that what you mean when you say I wasn't being serious? Yes. You may think you're fighting against a witch, but you're just getting along with her and playing. You're just playing at fighting in a friendly game of chess. It may be a serious contest for you two, but looking at it from far away, I only see you playing around and following the rules like you're good friends. <laughs> That's harsh. But as long as you're unable to win at this game, you won't be released from this place. That's why I came. I came to bring this game to its conclusion. You claim that you're closing in on a witch, but you're still just like a hamster running around in a wheel. I feel like Angie's telling a lot of truth here. Yeah. It's kind of something that you've mentioned that, like, Battler's being, Battler's being pulled in by the witch, and he's, you know, getting drawn in by all these ploys and all this horse shit. He's not really thinking outside the box of, like, the red truths. Mm. Um, yeah, I don't know. It might be worth keeping an eye on Angie's reasoning. Anyway. <coughs> Wait a minute, stop. Stop laughing. I just realized. What? Ben. What? I the golden, up for my the golden rules, Ben. What's the golden rule? Well, there's the detective and then there's the then there's the Watson, right? And I've been saying the whole time battles, <laughs> battles like Watson. And now oh, we shit. have the detective. <laughs> oh! oh shit. Oh, oh shit. Angie is a detective that we really I need. spotted it from miles away without even realizing. <laughs> Brilliant. Well, let's see what they can cook up together. <laughs> Oh, one of those. Those things that run around and around in place night after night. At a glance, you might think that running around in a wheel is endless. The endless witch Beatrice. It's just like you. Except you, you run off the side and then it's over. Here we go. <laughs> he thinks he's fighting, but he's actually just running around in a wheel while making a fool of himself. This isn't a game. This is nothing more than a cage to shut him up in for all eternity. Oh. <laughs> You've likened my endless to something like a wheel that a mouse plays in. Interesting, interesting. <laughs> something this endless in a certain dimension can be less than endless in a higher one. The fact that a manger man manger sponge? I think so. Has an infinite surface area only matters in a world of less than three dimensions. In the three-dimensional world of reality, it has zero mass. Not only is it not endless, it doesn't even exist. <laughs> What an assertive woman. <laughs> it seems you are worthy of being called my enemy. <laughs> Who are you? I am your ally. And an enemy of witches. Of course, you don't have to believe it. No one can prove that I really am your ally. On the contrary, it's more desirable that you keep your guard up strongly enough to find me very suspicious. That's right. Last time ended up pretty bad. Gotta be at least that careful. I don't plan on getting tricked twice. <laughs> Beto laughed in a truly pleased way, which was humiliating only to Battler. People don't just get tricked out of the blue. It only happens when they fail to check things for themselves and leave it open to other people. <laughs> Saying that you thought the light had turned green just because you saw the other people start crossing doesn't count as an excuse for getting into an accident. Get it? Use your own reasoning, nerd. Yeah, I get it. You're telling me not to swallow information given to me by others, but to think for myself. There it is. In the past, I swallowed all the magic Beato showed me. I stopped thinking, so I was useless. Battler grimaced as he remembered his many painful losses. The witch watched and laughed again, putting on a bold appearance. I'll offer you advice in a way that works to your advantage. Of course, you shouldn't swallow everything I say, because no one can provide certain proof that I'm your ally. In the last game, Vigilio, who I thought was an ally, was actually on the witch's side. Battler couldn't get rid of his- Oh, Battler couldn't get rid- His head of- No, couldn't, couldn't read, read his head. I, right. I misread it. 
And then that I, look I, I baited you in. Thank you. That look wouldn't rid his head of that eerie smile worn by Vigilia, a person he'd once even thought of as trustworthy and reliable. So I don't need you to unconditionally trust me. You might as well take my advice as nothing more than an opinion to be considered. After all, the player who's fighting in a game against the witch is you. That's right. Saying I lost because I followed the moves of an outsider would just be too pathetic of an excuse. Oh yes! My opponent is Battler. You are nothing more than an outsider. You should bear that in mind. <laughs> no, I'm not an outsider. With Beatrice and Ashirami a Battler, and who I gaze down from above, it's almost like a fight in the shape of a triangle. Here we go. At a glance, it might not look like a united front, but having a united front doesn't necessarily mean fighting together. Oh, <laughs> what an odd thing to say. Just now, he described fighting with you as closing the distance. But you can't measure distance with a single eye. Only with two eyes are things visible in three dimensions. And only then can distance be judged. And even when you have two fields of vision, it's pointless if they're the same place. You can pin down which is more accurately when they're far apart. Shooting from different positions and at different angles, so basically it's a crossfire. <laughs> interesting. We're shooting from different positions and different angles. So we won't get along with anybody. So I'll keep my own position separate and catch the witch in a pincer attack. <laughs> Are you okay with this, battler? <laughs> this girl may actually be an ambush I set up, right? She might just be saying something plausible to gain your trust, right? <laughs> Maybe. She's been saying that over and over again herself. So of course I can't blindly accept her advice. But as to whether she's worthy of trust or not, I can think for myself and make a decision. As long as I don't stop thinking for myself, I won't be tricked by anyone again. <laughs> what confidence will show me a battler? <laughs> After you've said so much, it makes me want to trick you all over again, you see? I can't wait to see what kind of face you'll make when you realize you've been duped once more. <laughs> How pleasant! <laughs> Looks like you know my name, but I don't know yours. Tell me. For a while, the girl remained silent without changing her expression even once. She looked as though she couldn't decide whether to say her name or not, or possibly as though she was deciding on the name she'd say on the spot. Gretel. You know, <laughs> I have to say. I've been waiting for this. Uh huh. This, I feel like, is a joke that maybe something to do with the Scottish accent. Because if you ever listen to a Scottish person say girl... I was not waiting for this. It sounds it sounds like getter. I want to clarify, I was not waiting for this revelation. This is not what I thought you were going to say at no, all. No, it's not. It was just an interesting <laughs> observation because I, th these two lines of dialogue is a conversation that I had with someone from You Scotland. had a conversation about Gretel and ghetto? N yes, because... Or girl the, and ghetto. The way that they say it, it, it with a like... I think like... Like around kind of like Dunfernland or whatever it is. I, sure. I can't remember. I don't know. But anyway, this just this just reminded me of a conversation I've once had. In this, a, this is a classic me. Scottish accent joke, is what you're telling us. Maybe. <laughs> but like, I was going to laugh maniacally, and I was like, no one will understand this. I still don't understand it. Yeah, I know you don't. No. Get who you are. It's my name, dumbass. Call me Gretel. And should I call myself Hansel? Because they're siblings. <laughs> Just it. kidding, I'm assuring you a battler. Call me battler. Nice to meet you. I hate handshakes. Don't take it personally. Uh, really, sorry. After all, it isn't certain that you're my ally. And he just told me to keep my guard up, too. <clears throat> battler drew back his right hand, which he had stuck out. His bitter smile disappeared and was replaced with a strong resolve directed at this new fourth game. Battler. Think deeply about why you must win against this witch. You can't stop with something abstract like, I'll beat her because I don't like it. Have a deep conviction that you'll definitely defeat the witch and escape from this world. Because there is definitely someone waiting for you to come back. For that kid's sake as well. Maybe there was something she wanted to say. Gretel clenched her fists in front of her chest and hung her head in silence at a loss for words for a short while. As though smashing through that silence, Beatrice spoke up in a forceful voice. <clears throat> Good, that should be enough of an introduction for Gretel or whoever. Come, try to remember what happened on October 4th. 
<laughs> he let the curtain open on the fourth game! At the same time, as though it had been blown by a sudden gust of wind, the clock that had been turned back to no October 4th, 1986, started to move. While we remained in the witch's tea room, the blue-gray sea and the green Rakenjim are spread out beneath us, and we could see a boat heading there, its wake trailing behind it. The sky was already cloudy, and it seemed that the barrier of the typhoon would soon shut the island away. There was the boat docked in the harbor, and Goda helping to unload it. Then, once all of its passages had disembarked, the boat began to separate from the shoreline. The relatives were gradually swallowed up by the island. <laughs> Looks like you're as cheery as ever, Maria. <laughs> Maria-chan, you'll trip if you aren't careful. Look out! Ew, ew! Gonna fall, fall, sink, sink! <laughs> Long Miss Cousins I'd Love dashed across the beach. Is this... It might be Angie. I'm not sure. Yeah, yeah Angie. It's Angie. Long Miss Cousins I'd Love dashed across the beach, getting swallowed by the forest path that led to the mansion and disappeared. And of course, Oni-chan could be seen among them too. Damn it, stop right there, Maria! You nimble little brat! <laughs> ew! Ew! <laughs> Maria Oni-chan, whom I'd love, started dashing and Oni-chan chased after her. They were swallowed up by the forest. Following them, father and mother were also swallowed up. The rest of the parents were swallowed up. They're swallowed up, leaving only me behind. Dumbass. Why are you gonna joke around and play with a witch in a place like this? Come back quickly, Oni-chan. Don't leave me all alone. And realize, realize how cruel and lonely the world I'm isolated in is. Yeah. Whew. It was a very somber end to the chapter. It really was. Angie is a very unique introduction, I feel, to this to this game. And it's like totally separate perspective. 